web development, I just want to go through some of the things that you need to know because it can, it can be like mumbo jumbo. There's so many words that people use in web development and it's often hard to really understand what they're talking about. And you go to a web provider and they go, oh, it's going to be $500 for a website. You go to the next one, oh, it's 15 grand. What's the difference between the 500 and the 15 grand one? The same difference, we went, what's the difference with that tiny broken down you know, Datsun car compared to the, the brand new Audi? There's a lot of difference in terms of performance, security, reliability, even the way it looks and feels. So some of the industry words you'll hear out there is your coding language, your PHP, ASP.NET, all of that stuff. Framework, open source, jQuery, browser, cross-browser compatibility, custom development, design, scoping, uh, email marketing, e-commerce, m-commerce, f-commerce, um, PMS, CMS, C2As. So we're going to go through a few of those so that make a bit more sense to you. So, your programming or coding language, um, your website can be built in a different language. So your language is really how the website's constructed and what it's built out of. The most common one and easy one to work with is PHP. So that's a certain type of, of coding language. If a website is built in .NET, and there's a few large providers that have insisted on us building in .NET, it's less widely supported and it's often hard to get developers for it. So PHP is generally the, the more common one. Um, as we mentioned, we have dynamic content, so that means there's areas of your website, like your news, your blog, which changes regularly. It enables you the ability to go in there and edit it. Cross-browser compatibility, the other thing that most people don't realise, you spend $500 on your website, it doesn't work in any browser except for Internet Explorer from the 90s. Um, or it doesn't work in mobile phones. So cross-browser compatibility is making sure that your website is viewable on any browser. Chrome, Firefox, different versions of Internet Explorer, etc. We did, um, there's a lot of research showing uh, what browsers people are commonly using. Most people think that it's Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is dying. It's mainly Chrome now and Firefox, Chrome specifically. So Google Chrome is a really good browser because it's clean, it shows lots of websites, it shows websites that have been built with a lot of functionality. Sometimes if you view a website in Internet Explorer, certain things don't work or break. So that's really an analysis of how the industry is working and where people are actually viewing websites. Um, open source is something that's thrown around. So open source can sometimes be cheap because it's free. Open source basically means that a whole bunch of people in the community have built a framework uh, to build websites in. So WordPress, you can go to the WordPress website and you can build yourself a website. Okay. Or you can get something called Drupal or Joomla, like certain codes, especially for those um, nerdy coders, they can go in there and build a website out of that. That's open source, which is fine. It might suit a certain purpose, but it can also have issues as well. So your other choice is that you could go with an open source framework or you could go with what's called a custom framework. So it's really a cleaned up version. Um, it's built specifically for your organisation and it's closed circuit, so there's more control and quality. Um, the custom framework, like I said, some organisations, they might build a custom framework, then if they go out of business, you're stuck. So you can get sort of a mix between the two. I just wanted to highlight the difference between open source and custom frameworks. So some of the differences with open source, like for example, WordPress is quite common, so I'll refer to that. Um, the quality and stability might have issues, so there might be certain things that don't work or plugins you have to keep replacing. Um, the security can be an issue. So if you Google a lot of these, they'll come up with security issues, like people like, uh, are much more likely to hack it, because if it's something that's commonly used, then hackers can hack it. Um, the other thing is customization. Some of the, the frameworks are quite rigid, so they're quite hard to work with. The other thing with some frameworks like Joomla and Drupal, um, they could be programmed by a 14-year-old in East Africa. Like there's no quality control on who's actually developing that code. Uh, and also the search engine friendliness. Like sometimes um, websites that are built in WordPress are good for search engines, sometimes there can be issues with it. Uh, and scalability. So sometimes you might you know, start your organisation quite small and you've got this framework in place and it doesn't grow with your company. You can't add things to it, you can't build it, you just have to start from scratch. So these are some examples of the security issues I was talking about. So talk about WordPress being hacked, being backdoors, people getting in and breaking websites. Um, and if you think that you know someone's not going to hack your website, we've got a client called the Sujin. They sell tongs. It's kind of boring, um, but someone hacked their website just to hack it before they came to us. So people will hack just like they'll go and graffiti uh, a wall just for no reason, just to get their name out there, just to have a play or practice. It's a couple more examples of Drupal's one of the open source frameworks being